The Sun and Moon hype train is in full force, my friends. For those of you who've been living under a rock, boulder, or some other large immovable object, the first gameplay trailer for Sun and Moon was recently released, and boy does it have some juicy stuff in it. So of course, today I'm here to bring you all a drawn out in-depth over analysis of every little detail in the trailer, as well as a couple of comments on some extra footage from both the exclusive Japanese trailer, as well as the Koro Koro trailer. One clarification I do want to make before getting into this though, is I'm actually not going to be saying too much about the legendaries or the starters. The reason for this is I think both of them deserve their own separate videos. I will of course be doing a basic level analysis and making some important comments about them, but an in-depth discussion of both the starters and the legendaries is really way too much for just one video. For this reason, I highly recommend checking out those special videos, which I'll link below in the description once they're up. Anyways, with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and finally get into this analysis. First, I want to take a look at the following screenshot from the Koro Koro trailer, and if you look at the very left of this screenshot, you can actually see a brand new Pokemon with its back turned towards us. Now, as for exactly what this Pokemon is, I have a feeling it's the starting normal type for Sun and Moon, akin to Radita, Zigzagoon, Bidoof, and so on. There is speculation that it's an Eevee, but I personally don't buy this since there are some features it has that are clearly different from an Eevee. I also don't think it's an Eeveelution of any sort, since it's got these hooves that make it seem more like a deer type Pokemon than an Eeveelution to me. Moving on to the main English trailer, the first thing to notice is that 21 seconds, there's a globe on your desk. This is a huge stretch, but considering it's one of the first things you see in the game, and has deliberately been placed in the first screenshot, perhaps it's a reference to a future Pokemon Earth version. Also, in every single Pokemon game so far, you have some sort of Nintendo console in your room, and in this game the console appears to be the Wii U. A lot of people were speculating it would be the Nintendo NX as a sort of tease for the console that's coming out next year, but that's definitely not the case here. The next thing of note is that 22 seconds into the trailer, a man named Kukui greets you and addresses you as cousin. This man is likely a family member of yours that plays some significant role in the game. He also appears to be either a professor himself or some sort of assistant to the professor if his white lab coat is anything to judge by. Moreover, the Kukui nut tree is a tree native to Hawaii, and given that all of the professors of past games have been named after trees, there's no doubt that he's at least connected to the professor in some way. I'll discuss this a lot more later on in the video, but for now I want to move on to the fact that Kukui welcomes you to the Alola region. This name is so reminiscent of Hawaii that combined with many of the other references in this trailer, it is all but confirmed that the Alola region of Sun and Moon is based off Hawaii. At 25 seconds, we see the player running along a path filled with quite a few hibiscus flowers which are native to Hawaii. This once again further supports the notion of a Hawaii themed region. Also, and this isn't going to be popular opinion, but I'm going to go ahead and say it anyways, the graphics and engine of the game look somewhat similar to X and Y. My prediction is that when all is said and done, the improvement in graphics and engine will be relatively minor, perhaps on the same order as the improvement from generation 4 to generation 5. However, I do still think this is a Generation 7 and not a Gen 6.5 or anything like that. At 28 seconds, we get our first glimpse of who is most likely the Pokemon Professor of this region. There's wide speculation that he's going to be called Professor Palm, but this is actually false. His real name is Professor Hala, as revealed in the exclusive Japanese trailer. This fits in with the theme of past professors, as the Hala tree is a tree native to Hawaii. Now, the situation is actually a little bit more complicated than this, by virtue of the fact that Kukui could also be the professor, but once again, more on this when I look at the Japanese trailer later on in the video, since it gives us a few more details on who the professor actually is. Next, at 32 seconds, we get our first look at the starters for this generation. The grass starter is an owl Pokemon named Rowlet, and is a grass and flying type. The fire starter is a kitten Pokemon named Litten, and is a pure fire type. Finally, the Water Starter is a Sea Lion Pokemon named Popplio and is a pure water type. My personal opinions on the starters are that I actually like them quite a bit. I think Rowlet and Linden are incredibly cool, and while Popplio isn't my favorite Pokemon design out there, I think people are hitting on it a little bit too much at the moment. I feel like people always hit on the starters when they first come out, but once the actual game comes out and we get used to the starters, they end up being a little better than we originally anticipated. Also, just as an interesting note here, supposedly the typings for the final evolutions of the starters were accidentally leaked on the official Japanese Sun and Moon website. 
While I do think there's a good amount of evidence for this leak, keep in mind that this is not confirmed information, so please take it with a grain of salt. According to the leak, the final evolution typings will be as follows. Grass flying for Rowlet, fire ground for Linton, and water fighting for Popplio. Another good thing to know is that Rowlet starts out with a damage dealing grass type move called Leafage, Linton starts out with Ember, and Popplio starts out with Water Gun right off the bat. Moreover, as the starters are being revealed, we see a good deal of battle gameplay, and I want to note once again the similarities in battle camera, graphics, and mechanics between Sun and Moon and X and Y. They look fairly similar, which supports the idea that Sun and Moon will not improve too much in the way of graphics, engine, and battle mechanics. For now, I'm going to leave the starter coverage at this and save the rest of the discussion for a standalone starters video, so let's move on to a different topic. At 36 seconds, if you look in the background, you see what seems to be an entrance to a really creepy forest. This forest may be the starting forest you have to go through to start off the game, akin to Viridian Forest, Petalburg Forest, and so on. At 1 minute and 1 second into the video, we get a bird's eye view of the Alola region. One thing I want to draw attention to here is in the top left corner of the picture, we actually see some sea, meaning the top left corner is actually the other end of the island. Does this mean that what we're seeing here on the screen right now is the entirety of the Alola region? My gut says no, since I think it would be way too small if this were the case. Instead, I have another explanation for this screenshot. I think the Alola region is made up of many different islands, just like Hawaii is, and what we're seeing right now is just one of the many islands of Alola. Moreover, we see a volcano on the island, which if you still aren't convinced yet, provides even more evidence for Hawaii. The volcano may also end up being an explorable region in Sun and Moon, since we have explored volcanic areas in past games, such as Stark Mountain for instance. Finally, there are a lot of roads in this picture. In the reveal trailer for Sun and Moon a few months back, some pictures of people and Pokemon riding in cars were shown. So does this perhaps mean that we'll be able to drive cars on roads in Sun and Moon? I think actually driving cars might be a bit of a stretch, but it's likely that the roads will play some role in Sun and Moon. At 1 minute and 6 seconds, we see a female figure looking off into the distance, and this is most likely your mom in this game. The reason I say this is because of supplemental footage that we got in the Japanese trailer, which I'll touch on more later in the video. Additionally, this screenshot looks absolutely stunning. I expect the visuals in this game to be really damn good. At 1 minute and 9 seconds, we get a view of what appears to be a very large city in the Alola region. If I had to say, I think the large tower off in the distance is some sort of supermarket where you can stock up on a bunch of items. At 1 minute and 12 seconds, we get a panning view of what I'd say is the hometown of the player, or if not the hometown, one of the very first cities in the game. This is the town where you receive your starter, since at 1.13 we see the same platform from earlier where you got to choose your starter. At 1 minute and 15 seconds, we get a screenshot of your player running at night. Also, since I haven't pointed this out yet, what the hell is that thing on the female character's head? I hate to hate, but I'm not really a fan of it, whatever the heck it is. At 1 minute 16 seconds, we get a glimpse of what I'm almost certain is your rival in this game, or perhaps one of your rivals if we end up getting multiple rivals. And to be honest, my first impressions of him aren't that great. His mannerisms make him come across as a cheerful and laid back guy, which is a bit of a disappointment for me since I was hoping for an intense douchebag rival like Blue or Silver. At the same time, we barely know anything about him at this point, so I could very well be completely wrong about that and he could turn out to be a great rival. Another important thing to note is that there are theories out there that he's related to the professor, specifically the professor's son. While I wouldn't necessarily say that such speculation is outright false, at the same time I don't think we have enough information at this point to form any definite conclusions on the matter. So I guess what I'm trying to say is that this theory is a thing, but it's far from confirmed. At 1 minute and 22 seconds, we get our first look at the Sun Legendary, and damn does this thing look epic. It seems to be some sort of Sun Lion Pokemon, which reminds me a bit of Pyroar, only way more badass. One thing I want to draw specific attention to is the Sun Legendary's face, which is actually colored dark blue, the color of the Moon Legendary. We also see a strange marking on its forehead at 1 minute 24 seconds, which might have some sort of significance with regards to the lore behind the Legendaries. Before moving on to the Moon Legendary, I want to take a second to look at the backdrop of the Legendary Battle at 1 minute and 25 seconds. It's fairly obvious that this is where you have your confrontation with the Legendary Pokemon of the game. 
Additionally, in the background, we see the symbols for Sun and Moon, as well as a massive third symbol right above where the Moon Legendary is. I would imagine that this symbol has some sort of significance and could be the symbol for the third member of the Legendary Trio, if indeed we end up getting a Legendary Trio. So keep all this in mind as we look forward to Sun and Moon. Finally taking a look at the Moon Legendary here, it seems to be this epic dark bat-like creature. Moreover, you can see that it actually has red eyes and the color around its face somewhat mimics the Sun Legendary's color palette. I wonder if perhaps this means there's some sort of connection between the two since the faces of both take on the opposing Pokemon's color scheme to some extent. A couple of shots in the dark here, perhaps they came from the same source or were once a single Pokemon that split into two Pokemon. At 126, we see the Moon Legendary using what's most likely its signature move. It morphs into a form that looks like a full moon, and then blasts a powerful beam of blue light at the enemy. I could go on for much longer about the legendaries, but like I said, I want to analyze them more in depth in a separate video, so as with the starters, I'm going to leave things here for now. Finally, to end off the English trailer, we have the reveal of the release dates for these games, which is November 18th, 2016. However, we're not entirely done with the analysis just yet, since I do want to mention a couple of important things from the special Japanese trailer, which I've also linked below. First of all, the general concept of the Japanese trailer is a boy moving from Japan to Hawaii, buying Pokemon Sun and Moon, and then making some friends by playing the game with other people. The reason why this is significant is it potentially sheds light on the plot for Sun and Moon. The fact that the kid in this trailer moved from Japan to Hawaii has led many people to speculate that the main character in these games moved from Alola to either Kanto or Kalos. Kalos would make sense given that the last game took place in Kalos, but if you extend the parallels in this trailer, Kanto is based off parts of Japan, so it could very well be that the main character is originally from Kanto, just as the boy in the trailer is from Japan. You could actually make similar arguments for some of the other regions, but at this point I'd say regardless, the two most likely possibilities are that the main character came from Kanto or Kalos. Next, and this is one of the more subtle things in the Japanese trailer, at 41 seconds you can see the Sun Legendary using its signature move on the TV in the game shop that's selling Sun and Moon. Or well, I guess it's not confirmed that this is the Sun Legendary signature move beyond a doubt, since the footage is very hard to make out, but I'd at least put the likelihood very high. At 56 seconds, we see some sort of interface with a video chat as well as some other options on it. This feature could be akin to various Pokemon devices from previous generations such as the Pokenav, Poketch, and so on. Additionally, trainer customization is confirmed to be returning as is evident in the screenshot of 58 seconds which is great to see. Once again though, whatever the heck is on the girl trainer's head, I'm really not a big fan of it. Next, and this is also subtle, at 1 minute 45 seconds in the Japanese trailer, we see a dialogue bubble with a person named Hala speaking. Hala is asking you which Pokemon you want to be your starter. Now, given that this person is asking you such a question, the most likely possibility is that the professor will be named Professor Hala. This is further supported by the fact that all professors are named after trees, and the Hala tree is a tree native to Hawaii. There is another possibility to consider though. It could very well be that Kukui is the professor, and Hala is his mentor or perhaps father, leaving us in a situation similar to Professor Juniper and her father, who is a retired Pokemon professor. Or maybe Game Freak will throw us a twist, and they'll even both be professors. Either way, I think it's a pretty safe bet that Hala and Kukui are the most likely candidates for the Pokemon professors in Sun and Moon. Another important segment of gameplay is that 2 minutes and 5 seconds into the Japanese trailer, there's an older woman talking to the player character. In my eyes, there are two possibilities for who this is. Either one, she's your own mother, or two, she's your rival's mother. I'm definitely leaning towards your own mother at this point, because you see Kukui on the side of the screenshot, who is your cousin. And why would your cousin be in your rival's house? It makes much more sense for your cousin to be in your own house and for this to be you talking to your own mom before leaving your own house. Also, I'd like to draw attention to the Meowth beside her. This confirms that Meowth will be in the Alola native Pokedex, which indicates there's a chance that Persian will get an evolution or a mega evolution of some sort. Finally, at 2 minutes and 7 seconds, we see the first battle with your rival in these games, and this pretty much confirms my statement that the dark-skinned, black-haired boy from earlier is indeed your rival. Alright guys, and that's pretty much gonna do it for this trailer breakdown. I hope you all found this video at least somewhat informative and learned a couple of new things from this analysis. 
As always, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to drop me a like down below and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already for more Sun and Moon videos in the future. And of course, be sure to let me know down below in the comments which version of the game you're getting. Otherwise, I hope you all have an awesome rest of your day, and I will see you in my next video.